This is DW News live from Berlin. With his country in crisis, Venezuela's president seeks a second term in office. And with a voter turnout predicted at a record low, Nicolas Maduro's victory is almost certain. The opposition is largely boycotting the vote. Critics are calling the election a farce. Also coming up. At this year's Cannes Film Festival, the Japanese family drama Shoplifters scoops the coveted top prize, the Palme d'Or. And in the German Cup final, a shock loss for football giants Bayern Munich. Underdogs Eintracht Frankfurt beat Bayern 3-1. And we'll bring you all the highlights from Saturday's game. I'm Helena Humphrey. Thanks for your company. Venezuelans are heading to the polls in an election that is expected to hand President Nicolas Maduro a second term in office. Maduro has already cast his vote, but opposition parties have vowed to boycott the elections. More than 20 million Venezuelans are eligible to vote, but low turnout is predicted. The oil-rich countries descended into economic turmoil under Maduro's socialist government. And this year, inflation has reached an all-time high of more than 13,000%. The rising prices have hit workers and business owners hard, but not everyone blames the government. Well, I'm joined now by DW's Ophelia Harms Oruti, who is in Caracas. Good to see you, Ophelia. Now, the uh, extreme poverty that many are suffering is truly shocking. Maduro is expected to win these elections. What would that mean for the country? Well, it would definitely mean a deepening of the crisis. Um, what we have heard is that there will be probably more sanctions from the outside. The United States, for example, has threatened to cut some of its oil imports from Venezuela if the government was to carry through the elections. But it is amazing to see that people still vote for Maduro. We have heard it in the, in the piece and we have also talked to people here. And let's remember that more than 60 million people are dependent on the food supplies given away by the government. And also what we see is a lot of, a lot of people still hold on to this idea of socialism, of this 21st century socialism that has been spreading around Latin America in recent decades. Ophelia, you point to a potential deepening of the crisis. So what would uh, persuade people to vote for him? Well, it has to be said that um, Maduro and his government and also Chavez before him have been able to uh, hold tight controls of the country. It is believed that there is an intelligence apparatus that is advised by Cuba's own intelligence. And um, what we also see is that um, they do control the media. Freedom of press have been, has been suppressed. And also what we see is that um, the state controlled media diffuses a lot of propaganda that says that the crisis is not fault of the bad management, not the fault of the, of the government, of its bad management, but of uh, the international sanctions and the oil crisis that started 10 years ago. All right, so explain that for us then. Where does the truth lie between uh, sanctions and then mismanagement in the government? Well, the government relied on the oil prices for too long. They, they were um, spreading this, these wide um, social programs that can't be held with the current oil prices, and they never um, saved some emergency funds. Now, that is what the opposition is criticizing, and the opposition, unfortunately, has been very divided, so they, can't, they, ha they haven't been able to, to impose a new system of, of government. We see um, a, an opposition that has four million people who fled the country already. They, they, would, they are against the government, and so they, they are missing in an opposition that could may, may, maybe make a difference. Um, and what we see is that the only person that might be uh, Maduro's big opponent, which is Henry Falcón, the former governor of Lara State, has um, been criticized by many people because he used to be a uh, supporter of the Chavez government, a big friend of, mm -hmm. of Mr. Hugo Chavez. 
DW's Ophelia Hams Aruti reporting for us from Caracas. Thank you very much. And now to some of the other stories making news around the world. China and the United States appear to have backed away from their threats of a trade war. The world's two largest economies say they've agreed to reduce the US trade deficit with China. Under the deal, China's pledged to significantly increase its purchases of US goods and services. An attack on an Orthodox church in the Russian province of Chechnya has left a churchgoer and two police officers dead. Four armed men raided the church during a service. They were killed by security forces. Chechnya is a mostly Muslim region with a history of separatist violence. French film director Luc Besson is under investigation for rape. According to French radio station Europe One, a woman filed charges with French police alleging Besson drugged and raped her in a Paris hotel on Thursday night. Besson is one of France's best-known film directors. Authorities in the U.S. state of Texas say a 17-year-old has confessed to being the sole gunman in a school shooting near Houston. The suspect's been charged with murdering eight fellow students and two teachers. His family members say they're shocked and confused and have offered their condolences. In Hawaii, fast-moving lava is pouring from the side of the Kilauea volcano, threatening a key escape route. The flows of molten rock are advancing towards homes and a coastal highway. The Hawaii National Guard's warned of mandatory evacuations if more roads become blocked by the lava. Now, the Cannes Film Festival kicked off over a week ago, and now the moment film buffs have been waiting for the awarding of the top prize, or Palme d'Or, this year going to Japanese movie shoplifters. Now, the film takes a challenging look at conventional views on what constitutes a family. And overall, this year's festival was more politically charged than usual. Well, Bayern Munich's season ended in dramatic and disappointing fashion on Saturday. The German football giants were defeated by Eintracht Frankfurt in the final of the German Cup. The underdogs came out on top in a fast-paced all-action game that also saw some controversy. Coach Niko Kovac now takes over at Bayern with his head held high, while it was a bitter disappointment for outgoing coach Jupp Heynckes. And that's the latest from the DW Newsroom at this hour. I'm Helena Humphrey in Berlin. Thanks for your company and see you soon.